What's going on YouTube? You guys have all probably wondered what the heck is going on with this guy? Where has he been? Well, where I've been is busy getting this boat ready for you guys. So I've got a video here with about 20 or 30 straight days of maintenance. And since I've gotten rid of my, my other boat, uh, I've been pretty busy trying to get this thing together, but I was trying to figure out, do I want to post videos now? Or how do I want to do this for you guys to kind of show off the boat? So if you watched the last video where I uh, picked up the boat from Maryland and how I used U-Ship, I have about 20 or 21 videos or so that uh, detail every single day that I put in to get this boat ready to go. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, I wanted to condense it into just one video for all of the maintenance days uh, instead of just throwing out one day, one video, you know, one maintenance day, one video. So. And so while I have this opportunity, I want to thank you to all of my new subscribers and welcome back to all of my old subscribers. I don't have a lot of subscribers, guys, but I hope that the subscribers that I do have are, are valued subscribers and that you like my content and you appreciate what I do because it, it, there's a lot that goes on in, in getting these videos out, guys. It's a, it's a huge production. You know, some guys go out there and just slam videos together and, and you just wonder why they do what they do. I spend a little bit of time trying to figure out what kind of content I'd like to release, you know, the footage that I want to release and and when I want to release it. So, you know, in, in all of that thinking and, and in all of that, you know, bringing the footage home and, and looking through all of it and figuring out what we're going to do and how we're going to use it, I really hope that you guys appreciate it and I also hope that all my viewers appreciate it. So please subscribe. Please follow my channel. It's what keeps me going. You know, at some point, you know, when the channel doesn't do as well as I am hoping that it's going to do, at some point I'm going to decide, do I call it? Do I just not record anymore? I'm still going to fish, but uh, to put in the effort of, of putting in all of these videos, I mean, it's something I might have a second thought about. So I hope you guys appreciate it because uh, I'd really like to know. Let me know either in the comments or, or let me know by subscribing. Because if you do that, I'll continue to release these videos. I'll continue to make something that's uh, that's worth, you know, a view for you guys. So so a lot of these videos that I'm posting, guys, are uh, posts that I put onto my Instagram page. And if you're not following my Instagram, why not? What's wrong with you? Follow me. Check it out. You guys get to see all the latest stuff, all the new stuff. You know, I only get to post about a minute worth of content, but it's a minute worth of content that I spend a lot of time making sure that it's substantial in that 59 seconds that Instagram allows you to do, rather than waiting for a full video that uh, I have to post on YouTube. So check me out on Instagram, 24K Sport Fishing. You'll find me. Same thing with uh, my Facebook, 24K Sport Fishing. You'll find me. It's all over my boat. It's all over my pages. It's all over my content. Check it out. Follow me. With that said, all these videos that I'm posting are one minute clips of about the 22 or 23 days worth of maintenance. And I'm just throwing them into this video for you guys to share everything in a single day or in a, in a single video for you guys so that I don't have to post individual content for you guys. But all of this stuff has already been on my Instagram. I'm just trying to catch you guys all up. I know a lot of my YouTube viewers. Uh, haven't seen my Instagram or don't follow my Instagram. So please make sure you do that so you get the latest. So with all of that said, I really hope you appreciate the content because I spent a lot of time on the boat. I spent a lot of time thinking about how I would make the boat very fishy. You know, a lot of guys who get their boats, they customize it. I, I like to do the same thing. I'm not just going to take the boat out there. I want to check things out. I want to familiarize myself with the engine. I want to familiarize myself with the deck, the storage compartments, what I can and can't do, how fast I can drive, you know, the type of ways that I can drive. I have trim tabs on this boat, so I have to figure out how to use that. And it's great because of the weight distribution. Now it doesn't matter if, you know, 10 people sit on one side. My trim tabs will allow me to raise, you know, uh, the boat into a level position to where we're not just, you know, bent over on one side like like this driving instead the trim tabs allow us to 
you know, center ourselves across uh, while we're on plane. So I'm really, really excited about that feature too. And it's pretty standard on larger boats. I mean, 20 to 20 uh, foot and up. I think a lot of these boats have the trim tabs on them simply because of that reason. A lot of the weight distribution is necessary to get the boat um, running, you know, at, at the most uh, best performance. If there's one thing that I really appreciate about this new boat, guys, it's the camera angles. I mean, my last boat, I had to, to rig a left and a right camera on the rear, but this boat, it's really high. And I've got a, a cabin that allows me to mount the cameras up high and I can see the entire deck in the rear of the boat, all the way from the transom and all of the downriggers and the fishing poles with one camera, one camera. I couldn't do that before. So that's what I really, really love about this boat. So I can use less camera, I can use less media. Um, and then just focus on um, capturing the content because if you guys don't know creating the content on multiple cameras running 4k it burns up a lot of data not only that but it requires a lot of storage to kind of keep all of that and figure out which one of those pieces you want to put into a video so I'm glad I'm able to reduce that by about 50 percent so I have a rear camera view I have a front camera view of course I've got my chest camera view you know on my life vest and then I've got one more extra camera, which is my long uh, selfie stick camera, which I used for the crabbing season last year. Um, and it worked out really nicely. So we're gonna be able to reduce a lot of our data, reduce a lot of our uh, need to export a lot of that content. So, you know, let, let's see where this goes. And uh, it, there's lots of benefits to not only owning a new boat, new used boat, but the, there's a lot of nuances involved too, because now I have to learn it all over. Uh, I don't know anything about this engine, so I'm going to take it apart, get used to it, get familiar with it, figure out how to maintenance it, and that's what we're going to do in this next video. So I hope you stay with me. Enjoy the content. Like I said, I'm condensing everything uh, that I've done into a single video. That way I don't have to release multiple videos of each one of those days that I was uh, doing those maintenances. Um, anyway, let's, let's, let's get out there. Uh, let's do this maintenance, finish it up, and then enjoy the videos. So the third day was a very interesting day, guys. The trailer was an absolute nightmare. Anything and everything that could go wrong with that trailer went wrong with the trailer. All the wires were corroded, the lights fell off, some of the lights didn't work at all. So we put a lot of work into this one. So check this one out. Yeah, this boat took a really good beating driving out of Maryland. So the rumor has it that this boat has been sitting for a year, year and a half in the sun, which is gonna cause all the plastic to weaken and become brittle. 
So we're gonna replace that while we're at it. Those three tail lights. And then we'll replace that one with waterproof LEDs. <music> So it was on day four that I decided I wanted to get rid of the built-in automatic charging relay and put in a brand new one with a, a start isolator and another charging relay. That allows me to have a complete automation and not have to think about which batteries are being charged because the alternator will charge both the house battery plus the uh, starting battery. So check it out guys. We're finally into the electrical. We're, We're going to replace like this automation. Old so we're gonna replace this bad boy with something a little bit newer. And this one allows you a simple on and an off with a complete isolation between the house and the primary battery. And we're going to include a start isolator, automatic charging relay. This is going to allow the alternator to charge both batteries while separating the two batteries and allowing you to still use both. Pretty neat. So as you guys can see, you don't just go in here and do this stuff. You gotta really plan it out. So come on, raise your hand if you would rather not think about which battery you're using. And also raise your hand if you would prefer not to think about it at all and have this done completely automatic. All right guys, finally got the top on. It's looking wonderful. Man, that looks great. It's positioned perfectly. And then I plan to install a distribution center right here for the rear, for the future. That's what I've got these power cables for. Well, this power cable. So it was on this day that I realized the tongue jack was completely corroded. Every time I would twist it, it would would lock up and it just wasn't any good and I didn't want to put any time and maintenance into greasing it all up so I just bought a brand new two-wheel 1500 pound tongue weight maximum tongue jack and then I decided let's just replace it let's just pop it on there it's only four bolts and I did that along with a charging port that allows me to uh, charge my boat uh, you know when it's in front of the house uh, and it's plugged directly into my onboard charger, which I'm going to install in another video. Check it out. Now we're on to some power. I need to be able to charge the boat. So I got this fancy little charging port. Look at this, beautifully made. Everything is fully enclosed. It's heavy duty. All right guys, the moment of truth. Find out if my work is shoddy. So if some of you didn't know, the Garmin units and a lot of Lowrance units comes with an ability to network these, you know, units together. You know, as a network engineer myself, I can't have a boat with multiple network devices or network capable devices and not do that. So that's what I did. So we utilized 
a Garmin switch, uh, a Garmin network hub, if you will. And then we plugged them all together and then we allowed them to all talk together. That's what we did on this day. All right, guys, what kind of network engineer would I be if I didn't network the boat? And I'm doing that so I can have all the sonars share data, share plot information, share tracking information, waypoints and so forth, and even share live views. So this is what I'm doing. Yeah, so I'm setting up the Garmin network using the RJ45 waterproof cables. These things aren't expensive, but they aren't exactly cheap either. Yeah, so the previous owner used regular audio cable instead of marine grade cabling. It's all rotted out and oxidized and salt water's eating it up. So I don't know if I mentioned this and you might have caught this, but in the transport from Maryland back to California, one of the bearings went out and we spent at least a day wasted while you know the, the transport guy had to take it to the repair shop and have the bearings replaced. So I said, you know, I'm not gonna have that problem again. So I inspected all of the bearings and the, and the axles and I decided I'm gonna pull all of the old hubs. I'm going to pull up all of the bearings and I'm gonna replace them and grease them myself. And that's what we decided to do on this day. possible I may need to dremel these off uh, all right you stubborn bolt meet my friend dremel and he brought a friend their names are easy 456 Well, so here we go guys on this day, it's time to get into the engine. So here's an opportunity for us to kind of check things out, uh, take a look at the, the internals, make sure things are not rusty and old and we get to pop out spark plugs and check out all the wires and cabling and just kind of get a look inside of the engine. This is what we did on this day. Now for the engine check. We're gonna get the spark plugs checked out, the wires, clean out the carburetor. We're gonna take a look at all of that and crank it away. All right, let's check it out. Yeah, that's pretty foul. Yeah, we're gonna replace these. Goes to carburetor one. Two goes to carburetor one. Right. So 
So the right carburetor is removed, including all of the hoses. One of the most exciting days of my life, one next to my daughter being born, was getting this kicker motor. I mean, come on. I've been wanting this kicker motor for a long time, and I ended up getting a 9.9 .9 Suzuki straight out of the shop. You know, high thrust engine, because I couldn't find anything that would support this boat with the long enough shaft that would get underneath the hull, and this was it. So this is what we did on this day. It finally arrived from FedEx after a couple days wait. It got delayed two days because of weather, but here it is. Here comes the engine. 9.9 .9 motor coming out. Here comes the Suzuki. Not 9.9 kicker straight out the factory. Okay, Houston, I think we have a problem. The kicker motor is right in the center of where the trim tabs are installed. So I had to figure out, do I get rid of the trim tabs or can I move them six inches? I don't know yet. Okay, I think I made a decision. And that is we're gonna remove the trim tabs here and we're gonna move it six inches that way to the right. That way I can move the entire kicker motor towards the steps and that should give me plenty of space the only downside with well, a caveat is that I have to now drill new holes so I'm gonna plug these up here we go this is the funniest day for me because my neighborhood really isn't that that big so I had to wait like towards the end of the evening when everyone else was in the house so I can see foam the engine now, if you guys don't know what seafoam is, you got to check this out because it smokes up everything. It's a carbon, a decarbonizer, and it's meant to smoke the heck out of the engine and get all of that gunk and nastiness out. But uh, it can also kind of scare your neighbors thinking your engine's going to blow up, but uh, it didn't. Let's check it out. All right, guys, time to clean out the engine. how bad this smokes. I think I got it guys. You just gotta show us some love. All right, so we're on a day 11, and this is the day that I wanted to, you know, 
utilize the network. So I wanted to get the two, you know, talking in sync and I wanted to see what the update would look like and I could, you know, grab an SD card, throw it into one of my Garmin units and it would find all of my Garmin devices and update them from one location. Fantastic, that's exactly what I wanted. Not to mention it shares plot data, you know, uh, marked information. So at the helm when I'm marking something, folks in the rear can also see that mark when I'm marking it. So that's an advantage. Okay, we're gonna update all of the Garmin units to make sure that they're all running the latest software version and they're all matching. I don't want any mismatches at all because I want 100% compatibility, or at least I like 100% compatibility. So we're gonna do that with this little eight gig chip. I downloaded the software from Garmin. That's great. It found my other unit and it is updating it over the network. All right, so now we're on to installing guest USB charging ports. That way anybody comes on board, has a device that they need to charge throughout the day. We have a Qualcomm quick charging port 3.0, super fast charging, courtesy of Captain Rick, of course. So I had to install a fan to blow out all of that fiberglass particles because it was really annoying my skin. All right, so I'll install these charging ports on the starboard side and on the port side. That way nobody has to cross each other when they're trying to charge anything. All right, so it's day 12. I had to replace the winch because the winch was obviously broken. So I finally got one that's rated for about 6,000 pounds on a roller trailer. So this thing should get me in and out of the water without having to, you know, hand crank it because it's, it's a fairly heavy boat and you can do it, but you know, I'm 42 years old now. So I, I don't want anything to do with that. So I uh, decided to get an electronic one that I can just press a button and the boat will come onto the trailer. Check it out. Okay, now that I'm just about wrapped up on the boat, I need to install the winch power cables. It's a four gauge cable and it requires 200 amp. Look at the size of these. Uh, industrial crimpers. So I'm forced to run four gauge wire on a 20 foot maximum length in order to support a 200 amp load maximum, which is what the winch requires. Oh my goodness. I'm beat. Whew. So tiring. So now that we've gotten all the nuances worked out, most of the things that I wanted to repair and replace, it's time to get into the cutting cabin to clean it out, you know, to check out the, uh, the head is what they call it. It's a toilet, basically. Make sure it's in good working order, good working condition, and then check out the sink. We want to find out if the sink is going to work. Um, and all of the inside of the, the cabin, I want to make sure it's, it's nice and clean. So we decided to clean all that out. And we spent almost a day, actually a whole day, getting all that cleaned up. Check it out. Okay, now to clean out the cuddy cabin. Follow me. Okay. Welcome to my home. I took out all the mats so I can wash them off, sanitize it. Here's my little toilet. Here's the head. And then my cook. Yeah, check that out. 
right, let's get to work, stop fooling around. Just got done cleaning the sink. I can stand in here. Check it out. I can fully stand in here. Got lots of room. <sighs> okay, last but not least. Got to get this thing nice and clean and uh, functional. That way I don't have to worry about bathroom breaks in the middle of nowhere. Seems to work pretty well. Seems to be pretty clean for the most part, but I'm going to sanitize this pretty Nice and clean now. Sink's all clean. Bathroom's all clean. The entire cuddy is sanitized. Let's stop messing around. Let's get on the water. Guess what I get to do to celebrate? That's right. And did I mention I got this barbecue grill for my birthday on a flat tire? So I don't know what happened to day 14. I think we were just waiting for a lot of the parts and I kind of lapsed on that day. But we're in the day 15 now. It's the trial. We get to take it out onto the water and we just get to see if it floats. That's it, that's all I wanted to do. Get it to float and get the engine to start and run. Let's check it out, let's see if that happens. Look how crazy this is. installed I get to the ramp and realize I have no gas two pumps smart right don't let me feel unbelievable oh I have not made it off the dock still fooling around with his engine at the dock but at least it floats that's good <laughs> I never made it off the ramp, but we made it out of the water, which tells me that there's a few things that works. The winch works. Mm -hmm. Well, as you can tell, we didn't have a good day. The engine stalled, couldn't figure it out. So I did what I could, cleaned out the carburetors, popped them back on, and we're out for a second day to see if we can get this thing operational. So, let's see if it works. This sure is a All right, well this job. time we know where we're going. Our goal today is to get from here, down to there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are finally off. Let's go see how this works out, huh? Whatever happens, happens. I gotta get off this ramp sometime. And we're off. Finally! Okay, so my break-in manual says I have to operate at 3,000 RPMs for one hour and 45 minutes. So we're gonna troll around the lake for one hour and 45 minutes. We're breaking in the engine. We're having fun all at the, all at the same time. We got a safety rope with a safety float and life jackets. You can't be any more safe than this. All right, all right. So I beat myself up pretty bad. You know, after two failed attempts at a sea trial, I decided to do the compression check afterwards. You know, a lot of you are gonna say, well, why don't you do that first? And I said the same thing, but I tell you what, I was excited, I jumped the gun, I should have done a compression check, 
that's what I'm doing in these videos right here. We're checking the spark plugs, seeing if they're foul, because I put some new ones in, but we're gonna take a look at them and uh, check this video out, it's pretty cool. All right, because we had so much trouble on the lake, I'm gonna do a compression test, which I probably should have done before I changed the plugs, but we're gonna check every single one of these cylinders to make sure they're at the proper PSI and rule out compression on each cylinder. Crank it. All right, this is the third cylinder on the starboard side. Let's go. Okay, stop. All right, last but not least, right, we're going after needle. the last cylinder. Let's go. Okay, so all the cylinders match at about 105, 106 PSI, with the exception of this bottom cylinder here, which is reading around 95, 96, I think. So, I believe that to be acceptable. I'm gonna test it one more time, just to be sure. I'm gonna say this is probably one of my more relaxed installation days. I got a chance to think about how I wanted to mount the cameras, where I'm gonna generate the power from, how I was going to you know, run as many cameras as I wanna run without impacting the boats. Uh, power capacity and, and battery amperage and so forth. I found a solution that works. It's a little box that sits on top of the helm at the roof and it's got uh, its own button plus it's got uh, you know, lights, mood lighting if you will. So check it out. Now it's time to run some power for my GoPro cameras. So I have them installed with the individual switch or an independent switch and on and off it can power up to four GoPro cameras in this little box right here. While I was doing all the little stuff, I was waiting for my fuel lines to come in uh, to replace the engine oil line, the actual fuel line for all of the fuel from the main tank all the way up to the fuel water separator and back out into the engines. Not to mention I replaced or, or was replacing the primer bulbs. I mean, everything with the fuel line, I wanted to eliminate to make sure that the next time that we go out, we have more success. At least that was the hope. So check it out, this is pretty cool too. Okay, here we go, another round of maintenance. I'm going to be replacing all of the fuel lines, the oil lines, and all of the priming bulbs. So we can get that all brand new and we can take care of any potential issues with fuel delivery. Come on. Look how nasty these cables are. And we'll replace them with brand new stuff. So I did find out that this has two ins and two outs. Okay, now we're gonna put mesh around the entire bundle. Make it nice and neat. So yeah, DMV, three hours, and that was a good day. It took me three hours to get through the DMV line, you know, with with COVID, everyone was all spread out and the, the wait was even longer. I mean, I couldn't get on with an appointment because the appointment mechanism was broken online. So I had to schedule a day off to go stand in line. And that's what I did. But I got the boat registered. I got my tags. And then, you know, about a week or two later, I finally received the tags. So that's what this video is. Guess what I'm holding? 
That's right. Got my tags. So on this day, with the neutral idling issue, I mean, the engine was running just fine, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out the neutral situation. I couldn't come back to neutral. I did a bunch of research over the days, and I got a few suggestions from a fellow boaters that suggested maybe the switch was bad, and I, I tested it and didn't feel like it was bad, but I replaced it anyway, so that's what we did on this video. Switch. That little switch right there is supposed to momentarily drop the RPMs just enough to get in and out of gear and back to neutral. That's not happening. So I'm gonna replace that in three bolts. Should be a very easy replacement. Okay guys, here we go. I just replaced the switch. I'm gonna head over to the Elkhorn uh, boat ramp and I hope that it's not as busy today. So let's see what happens. Okay, so Elkhorn isn't as busy today. We're gonna go try and see if I can get the engine started, idling, and of course, back into neutral. All right, let's go check it out. Make sure the engine is fully in the water. Looks like it's it working. Is. Let's give it a go. In gear, back to neutral. All right, it beautifully. I got it, guys. All right, guys, that was a success. I finally got it tuned up just right, but I had to be in the water to do it. it took me about a half hour. We got it. So after a really great day of success tuning the engine, I slept on it and I said, you know, if I can get that thing just a little bit more tuned to perfection, and I'm glad I did that because, you know, in the second test, yes, it went back to neutral, but I thought that maybe I should put it in 2000 or 3000 RPMs if I could and yank it back into neutral and see what happens. And sure enough, engine cut out. I can fire it back up. I could put it in gear, back to neutral, reverse back to neutral. But the moment I put it into a really high RPM and shift it back, engine would still die. So it required a little bit more tuning, but I got it. it took about maybe a half hour, an hour, something like that. But we finally tuned it to perfection. I don't think we need to touch it again. I'm really happy about this one. Okay, I didn't like the way yesterday was tuned. So I'm gonna tune it even further. Here we go. First thing I'm going to do is check to make sure the idle is fine. There we go. Idling nice. Doing last minute checks to make sure everything is idling nicely. And if everything checks out today, this is the second test, then I'm ready for a real sea trial. Now we're going to put it in gear at 2000 RPMs and just watch. There we go. Nice clean rev. Nice clean RPM. Okay, I'm coming back to neutral. Hard. Perfect. All right, guys. I believe we're done. Okay, so I determined it's time to get rid of the old VHF radio basically the marine radio that was in there, I wanted to get my own so that I can register that with the Coast Guard. Of course, with my information as opposed to the old owner's information. So I decided to do that. Um, that's what we did on this video. And it's important and it's a really, really critical uh, thing that you wanna do that if you own an ocean boat, that you get a VHF radio with an MMSI number that's linked to the Coast Guard and that your DSC, which is your you know, automatic calling feature, can reach the Coast Guard in an emergency with a push-up button. I carry my daughter with me. I bring her everywhere that I go when I'm fishing, or at least a lot of the times that I go, and I don't want that problem. That's why I also have a kicker engine 
plus the one touch emergency hail the coast guard button so that we make sure that we're safe out there so check it out all right so i just came from the boatus.com website to register for an mmsi number that way i can enable my vsc calling feature which is a one push of a button uh, hailing the coast guard option and in order to do that i have to punch those numbers in to my radio so we're going to do that now so upon registering you'll get a certificate with this number which is all the information that the coast guard needs for your particular vessel and it's tied to your radio so you only get one shot at this if you mess it up you either have to factory reset or you have to contact standard horizon to have them reset it for you so we're gonna make sure we get this correct Three, three, eight, three, eight, seven, seven, two, two. And that's all there is to it. Now you can feel 100% safe that if you ever have problems with your vessel or problems on board, one press of a button and you can hail the Coast Guard. All right, guys, well, that wraps it up. I mean, I don't think I have anything else more to do. I mean, I might have a couple things that I think of along the way, and I'll, I might post those now that I have a little bit more time and I've gotten rid of uh, most of the videos that I wanted you guys to see and I wanted to share. This is it. So now for the sea trial, I'm hoping to be able to get out there on the first day on a sea trial check out the boat, maybe do some light fishing, not some really hardcore fishing. We'll do some light fishing, but uh, I want to get out there soon. So I hope to be able to get that sea trial out for you. And then I'll, I'll do another video with a full walk around, checking out all the features and showing you guys all of the customizations in detail. You know, a lot of what you watch was more of the maintenance and kind of the, the fun aspect of it. But here's an opportunity for us to do a walk around so you can guys see it from the outside and the inside of the boat from the captain's perspective. So anyway, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And obviously, follow me. Find me on Instagram, guys. I remember telling you that. Follow me, guys. See you on the next one.